We're very lucky here in Hopkinton to have an incredibly supportive administration who has been willing to entertain all the crazy ideas that we've had and, and expansions and different things that we've done. And I feel so grateful for that. Um, and right along with that is our school committee. Um, they have probably seen me too many times at school committee meetings trying to get things to happen and, and bringing new ideas and they are just always in support of it and they believe so much in what you guys are doing and uh, understand the value of the athletic experience. Um, and I know that that's not necessarily the case in every town and every district and, and just wanted to take a moment to acknowledge that support that we get. Um, and a number of them are here this morning to support you. So school committee sent to us if you want to give a little wave. Yeah, summer here. So thank you so much for that. Um, also, as you guys know, um, our high school administration here with um, Mr. Bishop, Mr. Hanna, and Mr. Pondenville, I think that um, you guys hopefully know this at this point, but you're you're getting the best of the best in terms of who is leading your school. They are absolutely outstanding and, and as you know, supportive of all student activities, but particularly athletics as all of them were integral parts of their athletic teams in high school and in college. So they understand um, what, what this is. They've all coached at the high school level. Um, so I think that this is a special a special thing for them to see student athletes who have this passion to, to continue on. So, and I know many of you see them at games with their kids at night and um, being there to really support you. So they it's what they love to do and, and I know that they're really proud and I just want to thank them for the support that they give uh, on a daily basis to our programs. Um, and likewise, for those of you who participated at the middle school level, our uh, middle school administration is present at, at tons of those games and, and who also is supporting the ideas of expanding middle school programs. Uh, so I just wanted to thank them for that. Uh, some other behind the scenes people that you sometimes see and sometimes don't. Our custodial staff and our maintenance staff, um, they are working all the time, entertaining all my last second requests when we need something like two minutes before it's supposed to happen. Um, and you see them after games cleaning up the stands, setting up, doing so many different things. We're just very, very fortunate to have a custodial staff and maintenance staff who is working hard for us. And despite the crazy spring weather that we had, they're working hard on our fields too. Um, and now we just need the, the rain gods to stop to stop coming. So, um, but wanted to take a moment to acknowledge them. HCAM, obviously, also at everything. Really putting forth so much extra effort to promote what you're doing, the interviews, the season previews, the season recaps, um, the highlights, just so, again, here in Hockington, this is, we're very fortunate for this. Not every town gets that kind of support and that kind of um, accolade publicly. So really appreciate all that, all that you guys do. And Mike and Tom are here today, um, capturing this morning also. So they, they pretty much, do everything we ask and with a smile on their face and are so pleasant to work with. So I wanted to thank them. Um, just all the local newspaper and media outlets who are covering lots of our games. I feel like for those of you who have ever been interviewed by them or seen them, they're at a lot of Hopkinton events. Um, and, and they, I think, really enjoy talking to our coaches, talking to our student athletes, and, and enjoy being here. And that's because of the environment that you're creating. So I wanted to thank them. Um, I wanted to thank the Swoon for providing breakfast this morning. I know that um, everyone was kind of excited about it. They were like, where are you getting breakfast from? And I said the Swoon, there was definitely uh, positive feedback about that. So to thank them for that. Um, and just to a huge thank you to the Hockington Boosters and the HPTA for sponsoring this event, which they feel is so important. So really wanted to um, extend a sincere thank you to them for that. Um, She's not here today, um, this morning, because she'll be here later for games, but our athletic trainer, Jeanette Emerson, who is working every day to keep our athletes safe and um, to get them back on the field when they're, when they're injured. So I appreciate all of her hard work, and I know she's told some people that she will be retiring at the end of this year. Um, and so we are really, that's going to be a huge loss for our department, but we're so grateful for the time that she's spent here and all that she's done to help our uh, athletic department and specifically the athletic training room runs so smoothly. Um, also, Lou probably left. Lou, she doesn't like when I say anything about her in public, but uh, Lou is the brains basically behind all the operations. Lou Sanborn, she is my assistant. She puts in way more hours than she ever should. 
um, and she is here all the time and she's entertaining my texts at 10 p.m. when she's the only one that knows the answer to something. So um, I can't thank her enough for all that she does and she's often answering questions from parents, from student athletes, from coaches and um, is sort of the front, the front line of our office. So um, without her, this place would not be run smoothly. So if you see her or get a chance, um, to say thank you for what she does. I know she'd really appreciate it and she'll brush it off, but I do know it means a lot to her. Um, three more thank yous. First, I want to start off to, to take a moment to really acknowledge our coaches. Um, as most of you know, coaching is an uh, incredibly rewarding position to be in. It's, it's probably the most fun position I've ever had as being a coach. Um, it's really time consuming when you have a lot of other things going on. I'd love to say they're getting paid millions, they're not getting paid millions, so most coaches are not doing what they do for the money that they're making or not making. They do it because they love their sport and they love to have a positive impact on student athletes. Um, and so some of them are here today, and so I'd like to really, really say thank you to them. Some of them can't be here today because they're either working or in classes, um, but I know they want to be here if they could. What they do is really special and, and oftentimes really challenging, but that's because they want to make it the best they can for you, for our student athletes. So um, I'm just really grateful for, for all of the coaches who have had an impact on our student athletes throughout their career, what they've done. Um, and I think, again, some of the behind the scenes that maybe student athletes and parents don't always get to see are the, are the conversations that happen, you know, before the season, during the season, after the season, to really try and make things positive and that there's so much effort that goes into that. Um, and as you all know, it doesn't always mean things are perfect, but it means that they're always in a position to try and strive to make things better for you and, and to give you the experience that you deserve. So um, a sincere thank you to our coaches for all that you do throughout your season, certainly, but also throughout the year because it's not a two or three month job, as we all know. So. Um, really, really appreciate that, but I think the best part about coaching is that it's fun and, and it's enjoyable, so um, hopefully that you, you see that in your coaches that they're having fun with you. Um, parents. Parents, I think, um, probably are the ones that need the biggest thank you and don't always get it. Um, you are sacrificing your weekends, your dinners, your, you become a chauffeur for a lot of years, as you know. Um, when I look back to my high school career, I thought my parents were just like meant to drive me around to places. I did, and I didn't think they wanted to do anything else. Why wouldn't they want to go, you know, drive to New York for a basketball tournament for three days? They probably had nothing else to do or no other commitments. So um, now that I've grown up a little bit, I understand that sacrifice um, and just student athletes to, to take some time to really sincerely thank your parents for providing you with the opportunity to participate in athletics and also allowing you to play at that next level and encouraging that and supporting that for you. Um, it's such a proud moment for parents. I'm sure that all of you sit here um, just so proud of your sons and daughters, but knowing that it didn't come without family sacrifice and, and lots of different sacrifice. So um, just Thank you for all that you've done. Thank you for being uh, the sidelines and part of the Hiller spirit that we have here and supporting not just your sons and daughters, but the programs. As I look around the room, I see parents, coaches who are at tons of different sporting events, often ones that their sons or daughters don't even participate in just because they're supportive of the community and, and what we do here. So really thank you from the bottom of my heart for making this community what it is and for raising the sons and daughters that you have into such outstanding student athletes but more importantly individuals um and i'd like to wrap up my portion of this by acknowledging our student athletes what you're doing here is so special you have created a lasting legacy at hockington high school in what you're doing and what you do on a daily basis. And I can really confidently say, and I can speak on behalf of also our administration, some of the conversations that we have behind closed doors, the class that you're a part of, the class of 2018, is so special. Uh, you guys have been such a joy to work with. We're so proud of you. You make our lives 
easy, we rely on you, we depend on you, and that has nothing to do with how talented you are at your respective sports. It's just the kind of people you are. In addition to that, the fact that you have dedicated so much time to excel athletically, just like I said your parents are sacrificing, you're sacrificing too. Often miss social events, cramming homework into very small windows of time to be able to get to your practices and also get your schoolwork done, having jobs, trying to juggle all the different things that you do um, and you're so successful at it, it's, it's not easy. And it, this is a morning and a time that we have set to really just acknowledge that and thank you for what you do and tell you. We understand that it's, it's not always without challenge and that there is a lot that goes into it. And some of your peers recognize that and some might not and they, and they might see the things that you have to miss or sometimes you're so intense and so competitive and so focused and might not always understand that level that um, you're at but hopefully always being supportive of you. But there's just a lot of challenge, but with it comes so much positive, so many values that you're getting that I think will carry with you as you go through the rest of your life. So um, I just, I applaud you for the effort. I applaud you for representing Hopkinton High School in a way that is just, we couldn't ask for anything better than what you do. Um, you carry yourselves with boys in class, you're competitive, you have successful programs, uh, but I think the thing that I've loved the most, particularly this year, is to see the way that you all support each other in what you do. Seeing all of you at different sporting events, knowing that you're rallying behind each other, whether it's a long car ride to Bourne for hockey or to Springfield for basketball or something like that, there's people there, there's people who want to support you. And, What's cool is that the student body's doing it, but it's athletes supporting athletes. And um, there's something that's really special about that. And I hope that as you embark on the next uh, phase of your journey, and, and you're, I think most of you ready to spread your wings and, and do that, that you look back on your time at Hopkinton High School and think that it was, it was really fun and that you loved being around your classmates and you loved being part of your athletic teams. And that means that all the good parts, but also the challenges that you take those with you, you let them shape you, you learn from them, um, and that you get to that next level and you're able to really embrace the experience, embrace the challenge, um, and embrace the fun of it. Because if you look back on your high school career, I'm guessing some of you probably feel like it went by pretty quickly, um, and it does, and the next four years will probably go by pretty quickly also. So just do everything you can to sort of relish the moment and enjoy the glories and embrace the adversities and know that you are going to be shaped by all of these experiences. Um, and one little small anecdote before I wrap up and we acknowledge each of our student athletes individually. Um, I never realized when I was participating in high school and collegiate sports the impact it would really have on my life and how much I would use it in the, every single day in what I do. Um, and after, after graduating college and working for a year, I wanted to go back to grad school to be a guidance counselor because I loved working with high school students and, and I loved getting to know them. And so I went through grad school and I got all my resumes and, and everything ready to go uh, and I had no idea how I was going to get a job. It was, there were tons of people applying and there were applicants, 150 applicants for different jobs and so I figured, I don't know someone, how is my name going to get pulled out of the pile? I'm no different than anyone else. Um, so I eventually got a first interview and, and was fortunate enough to get the job. And I asked my boss, I said, how did you pick this resume out of the millions that you're getting for, for these jobs in, in education where it can be, they can be hard to come by? And she was like, oh, you played sports. And I was like, oh, really? And I'm thinking it was probably maybe my transcript or maybe, she was like, no, I saw that you played, you played sports. I knew you knew what it would be like to be part of a team, to work together, to collaborate to um, there's that give and take that you're all in it together and that collective responsibility and that tiny little conversation stuck with me because I was like wow that is just the fact that I played sports helped me get a foot in the door and then opened my eyes to every day how I was impacted by that athletic experience that I was fortunate enough to have um, and, and I still use it every single day and yes it's an athletic director, of course I do, but in any job I've had, in my family life, in my friendships, 
my experience through athletics is just integral in navigating all of those. And so I say to all of you to just think about it and be cognizant of it and embrace it because it was something I had no concept of until much later in my life. So I think many of you recognize that and are realizing it. Um, but it's kind of fun when you're actually still living it and you get to see it put into action that it just it shapes who you are and it's already shaped who you are and it will continue to do so. So I'm just, I'm so proud of all of you. It's been an absolute joy to get to know you. I am really sad that you're all graduating, but I'm excited, especially for those of you who are still in your spring season, um, to really embrace that and have a blast with it. But I thank you so much for what you've done to create such a positive culture athletically here at Hopkinton High School and beyond that. And I'd like to just take a moment to give a round of applause to all of our student athletes for all that they've done before we acknowledge them all individually. Okay. So now what we are going to do is take a moment to acknowledge each individual student athlete um, what college they'll be attending and what athletic program they'll be participating in. So what I'll ask for you to do is to come up. You're gonna stand in front of this lovely uh, banner that we have here. Mr. Terosian will take a picture of you uh, so you can get your best smile on and then we'll ask you to just kind of funnel back and then after everyone's done, we'll call you all back up for a group photo before we introduce our keynote speaker, okay? Awesome. All right. Our first athlete is Will Abbott. Will will be continuing his collegiate career at Quinnipiac University for lacrosse. Come on up, Will. Our next athlete is Anne Comfwich. Anne will be continuing her college career at the College of the Holy Cross for rowing. continuing her collegiate career at Campbell University for lacrosse. <laughs> Our next student athlete is actually not here today because she is at a volleyball tournament. Um, Amanda Gilbert will be continuing her collegiate career at Endicott College, so a prime example of some of the sacrifices that student athletes are making. I know she really wanted to be here today, but uh, she's working on her game. So uh, we'd, I'd like to give Amanda a round of applause. Even though she's <laughs> Next up, we have Ivy Gogolin, who will be continuing on to the University of New Hampshire for basketball. I'd like to call up next Hunter Goodrow, who will be continuing his collegiate career at Roger Williams University for lacrosse. <laughs> next, we have Caitlin Halloran, who will be continuing on to Quinnipiac University for track and field. Call up Kyle Cousins, who will be continuing on to the University of Massachusetts Dartmouth for football. <laughs> Next.
Next up, we have Beth Kohler, who will be continuing on Bowdoin College for field hockey. to Tufts University for baseball. <laughs> Next I'd like to call up Tatiana Markovic who will be continuing on to the University of New England for cross. Call up Ellie McCallop, who will be going on to Sacred Heart University for rowing. <laughs> Next up, we have Riss Prowl, who will be going to Regis College for basketball. Next up, we have Garrett Kruger, who will be going on to Merrimack College for track and field. Now I'd like to call up DJ Sloan, who will be going on to Quinnipiac University to play lacrosse. on the same team and another one to add to the mix. We have three going on to Quinnipiac with Caitlin, DJ, and Will, so it's pretty awesome. Next up, I'd like to call up Maddie Staus, who will be continuing on to Denison University for diving. Next up, we have Sophie Varner, who will be continuing on to Hobart and William Smith Colleges for soccer. And lastly, we have Andrea Way, who will be continuing on to Brown University for swimming. So now what we'd like to do is call everyone up to take a group photo, and then we'll have you all sit down and I'll introduce our keynote speaker. So all student athletes, please come on up. We'll take a quick group photo. <laughs> Um, 
At graduation, she led Division II in saves for a goalie and actively. So the list for Jackie goes on. Currently, she has played now for the Women's Professional Lacrosse League for the Boston Storm, which is really an amazing accomplishment. And she also works right here in Hopkinton at CrossFit Resilience as a coach. Jackie takes her athletic passions and uses them for the wellness and benefit of others. She is passionate about having individuals get the most out of themselves. She's also been willing to work with our teams in preseason training as they work together to form team chemistry and increase their fitness levels and also works with individuals who are trying to set personal goals both athletically and just in terms of being the best version of themselves. When I went to see what Jackie was doing at CrossFit Resilience just to kind of get a sneak peek into her world, I was amazed at seeing who, the person I knew who was once a student here at Hockington High School standing in front of a group of adults, commanding their respect but in the most humble and kind way, hearing people chatter on the side of the class, not even knowing that I knew Jackie about how amazing she is and that she has made a difference in their lives through the way that she coaches and the way that she interacts. She is passionate about athletics. She is passionate about working with people. Uh, it has been a pleasure now that she has entered the working world to actually be able to work collaborative with, collaboratively with her on a number of things. And I can't think of someone who is more suited to address this group of young student athletes than Jackie. She has lived it, she has walked the walk, she continues to do it, um, and she does it in, in the best kind of way. A couple, a couple more notes about Jackie and then I'll let her come up and speak. Uh, it's been a pleasure to watch Jackie promote team chemistry, enhance individual fitness levels, and help student athletes achieve their personal and athletic goals. Most importantly, Jackie is a standout individual who left a lasting mark on Hockington High School during her time here. Her maturity, awareness, intrinsic motivation, and character set her apart. And I really thank you for welcoming her back to HHS today to address you and share some of the pearls of wisdom she has learned along the way. So let's give Jackie a round of applause. thanking D. King for inviting me and the rest of the HHS staff for allowing me to come in this morning to congratulate and wish you all well in the next chapter of your lives. It's truly an honor. Thank you very much for that wonderful introduction. This is a very cool event, very special. Um, I am very jealous. I wish I had this back in 2013. This is really, really awesome. I want to talk to you all a little bit about how amazing college is and how much better it can be when you have the opportunity to play the sport that you love. I know you've heard a lot of this before, and you will continue to hear it, so I'd like to focus a little bit more on stories and examples from my experiences to help show and highlight some things about the student-athlete collegiate experience. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Jacqueline Cherko. I graduated from HHS in 2013, playing three sports. After high school, I went on to play at Assumption College for a growing program. Last May, I graduated with a major in marketing and a double minor in accounting and psychology. Post-graduation, I was drafted to the Boston Storm, a professional women's lacrosse league. The league I play in, the UWLX, is the first professional women's lacrosse league founded, and we are heading into our third season this summer. I am very lucky to still be playing the sport I love. Before I start with the college advice, I'd like to start with some life advice. Get your wisdom teeth out. Get them out before college and before you enter the real world. Uh, I got mine out on Tuesday, which is the reason for the chipmunk cheeks really puts a damper on anything in life during the week, so get them out during the summer, get, get them out on a vacation, do whatever you can, but don't wait. Get them out. All right? Back to the reason I'm here. Let's start at the beginning, my freshman year. My first year was awesome for about two weeks. After that, I was homesick. I didn't adjust well. I'm a homebody. I hated my freshman year, and by Thanksgiving, I was ready to transfer or leave school. I didn't tell anyone. I stuck it out and I tried to make it work, and it did. I ended up loving Assumption, loving my teammates and my coaches, the friends I made over the years, and my experience. Just because you have a bad day, week, month, or semester, doesn't mean you're going to have an awful career. 
Having a teammate reach out and notice a bad day can go a long way. Try to be that teammate or that friend. If you notice someone seems down, pick them up. It could make their day. This is one of the most important things I've taken away from college sports, how to be a good teammate. It's not always the easiest thing, and it can come in many forms and is done both on the field and off. I have always worked hard to do just that, and it is something I now appreciate and notice as an assistant coach at Assumption. It might sound very simple, but it should be a priority. It's great to pick someone up if they fall on the field or cheer them on if they make a mistake, but it is, it is even more important to be a great teammate off the field. If you see your teammate upset in the locker room or around campus, check in on them, text them, reach out to them. Make sure they are okay. This is something that doesn't happen all that often, but should be done every day. Be there for your teammates when they need you. College is awesome, but it's not awesome 100% of the time. There will be bad days. You will have them and your friends will have them. Reach out and they will do the same for you. Be a good teammate. Do this on the field, court, and ice as well. Nobody wants to play with a poor sport. Don't yell at your teammates, don't discourage your teammates, and don't laugh at them. Give constructive criticism, teach them something new. And if they're struggling with, say, their conditioning, stay after practice and run with them. If they need help with a class and you can help, do so. In addition, be happy for the successes of your teammates. If someone is playing over you, and rightfully so, be happy for them. Cheer them on and keep pushing them to be better. Don't be bitter and spiteful. I saw this all the time over my four years, and I, st I still see it now as a coach. The saying, don't be bitter, just get better, fits here. Use it as motivation to work harder and get better, but be happy they are performing well. Being a good teammate on and off the field will not only help you get along with your team <coughs> off the field, but it will help that on-field team chemistry even more. My junior season, I had a teammate a really, really good, huge playmaker of a teammate fail a class and become ineligible for the season. Of course, this was hard on her, but it was also hard on the team. We were really counting on her that year to make a big difference on the field. Yes, this is also another way of being a good teammate, not failing your classes, but more importantly, that you're a student first and an athlete second. Ultimately, your education is more important than your playing time, but you don't wanna let your grades slip and become ineligible. If your grades slip, two things can happen. One, you run the risk of not being able to play for a season. And two, graduating on time. Neither of which are good things. Playing the sport you love at the collegiate level is something you cannot get back. Not only will you be bummed you're missing a season, but you're also letting your teammates down. As student athletes at the high school level, you already know and have experienced the challenge to balance athletics, academics, and a social life. I hate to break it to you, but this does not become any easier when you go to college. That being said, if you played three sports in high school, or even one sport year round, you are very well prepared to take on that academic athletic balance of college. You already have the keys to being successful at the collegiate level. It is a high level of commitment and work, but it is always worth it. Being successful means you will need to dial in your time management skills and stay ahead on your schoolwork. You will have away games in the middle of the week, and you will need to turn assignments in before you leave. If you're not on top of your work, this could be problematic. Professors don't give special treatment to athletes. Stay on top of your work and go to office hours. I promise it will pay off. I struggled with calculus in college and for some crazy reason thought it would be a good idea to take that course during lacrosse season. I had a really tough time keeping up, especially missing class once every other week. I went to my professor's office hours, I'm not kidding, twice a week, all semester long. Not only did I not want to let myself down and get a poor grade, but I knew that if I didn't do well in that class, I'd be letting my teammates and coaches down as well. And that was the last thing that I wanted. Hard work pays off off the field, but it, pays off, but it also pays off on the field. In order to be successful and earn playing time, you will need to put in extra work outside of practice. This is true for every year of your career, but especially so your first year. Freshmen are not expected to start and play. If you want to earn playing time, you're going to need to do extra. Run more. Get in the weight room. Work on whatever it is that will make you better at your sport for three to five hours per week outside of practice time. Your coach will notice, your teammates will notice, and it will undoubtedly pay off. Being successful as a collegiate athlete is not a mistake and does not happen by chance. Those who excel on their team, within their program, or league worked hard to do so. Through playing collegiate sports, I have learned many valuable lessons, some that, now, that, that now apply to me in the real world. Everything you'll learn from playing sports will be applicable when you graduate. 
Things such as turning assignments in on time and putting in the extra work. You want that raise? You want that promotion? You're not going to get it by showing up on time and only doing what is asked of you. Show up early, leave late, and do more than is expected. Put in the extra. I'm sure you've heard it from parents and coaches. 15 minutes early is on time, on time is late, late is unacceptable. This will continue to be true in college and it will follow you after graduation. Don't be late to work, don't be late to a meeting, and don't be late to coffee. Being prompt shows respect and maturity and is greatly appreciated. Be early to practice, class, and work. Maybe there's that teammate you don't really get along with. You might have a coworker you don't enjoy either. You still have to work with them and make things happen. They don't have to be your best friend, but you do need to be civil and get the job done. When you finish college and begin applying to jobs, the first thing an employer is going to look at is that you're a four-year college athlete, and they will immediately bump you ahead of others. Employers know that those skills, that those who have played college sports have great time management skills, work hard, and work well in teams. Sports also teach you to be personable. At the collegiate level, and even the high school level, Sports force you to learn to converse with others. You will need to be able to talk to your coach about the good stuff, but also the hard stuff. This will translate later in life to talking with your boss. Over your career, you'll talk to referees, athletic directors, the media, parents, and trainers. All of these conversations, whether they are comfortable and natural or awkward and nerve wracking, will enhance your people's skills and make you more valuable in whatever field you go into post-graduation. Playing sports in college is an opportunity. It is earned, not given. You have all earned a spot on a college roster. Now you have earned the task of keeping that spot. You are lucky to have earned such an opportunity. Don't put yourself in a situation that might take this chance away from you. Some quick statistics for you. Only 6.5% of high school football players play in college, and 3.4% of male basketball players continue on. For the ladies, 5.1 and 12.6% of softball and lacrosse athletes, respectively, <coughs> move on to play at the collegiate level. These are not high percentages. Having the privilege and the chance to play for an institution is irreplaceable. Be smart, look out for yourself and your teammates. So, with all that being said, enjoy it. Enjoy every minute of it. Every experience, every practice, game, film review, team dinner, early morning wake up, Boss ride, scouting report, late practice, sprint, team lift, and ice bath. You'll miss all of it four years from now, I promise you. Those are the things you'll remember two, three, or five years from now. You'll remember the jokes in the locker room and the bus rides. You'll remember the funny things your coach used to say or do and your two teammates would joke about after practice. What you won't remember as much are your records or your stats, your wins and losses. Yes, you'll remember the big games and the big moments, but not as much as you'll remember the funny moments and the last share. Remember that over these next four years. Take every, mo every moment in and live in the present. Enjoy your time as a collegiate student athlete. Playing a sport in college is hard work, but nothing you are not able to handle. You guys are going to love it, and you're going to crush it. Take each and every moment in. There are only so many times you get to walk on that field, that court, or that ice. Don't take it for granted. Play hard, and I wish you all the best of luck. Thank you. So as you heard, Jackie has had full experience. She's living the experience still to this day and has a, just so much valuable information to share. So we really appreciate her taking her time, especially post wisdom to come here and chat with you all today and share a little bit about our experience. Um, as we wrap up, I just again want to thank everyone for taking the time to be here this morning, for allowing yourselves to pause for a few minutes to celebrate the successes that you've had and those that are to come. And I am just so grateful for what you've done here at Hockington High School to establish our athletic department and our school as such a special place to be. And I hope that all of you, whether you're playing your sport right now in the spring or you've already wrapped up, you also enjoy these last few months or month and a half of high school. Um, it, it goes by really quickly and I hope you look at the, your peers, some of whom you might know pretty well, some who you don't. Um, and, and 
learn from each other, even in these last few months. Tell each other you appreciate each other. Remember the laughs and the bus rides and the songs that you share that will always make you think of your junior season. Um, those things are the things that stick with you. So we wish you nothing but the best of luck. We're so excited for you and just huge congratulations. I know that um, when Tom and Mike are done producing all of their information, there will be video, there will be photos, which I can send out to your sons and daughters and you guys that will ask you to share with your parents, but it will also be posted on our athletics website for you to have access to. So um, feel free to stick around if you want to take any photos with your phone or anything else. But thanks again for being here to celebrate this wonderful morning with us, and I hope you all have a great day. Best of luck.